Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, it, and that's that's a great way of describing it. Listen up, Umi. This is a podcast with the most ducker. This is Forge the Narrative. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Forge the Narrative. My name is Paul, your host for the Alabama Lost Halls podcast. I'm joined by Tanya Gates. Hi, everybody. Red Powell and Adam Camilleri. Hey. Evening. How's everybody doing? We got some uh, some controversial things to talk about on this show. We're going to talk about wind path and tournaments and manipulation and submarining and all those interesting things that have crept up as a, as a point of conversation on the internet today. Mm, mm. About to get spicy. And real, no, so this yeah, I, people are going to feel different. They're going to get this, this. People are going to feel ways about this, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I want us to have a, get an, as open conversation as we possibly can, with the idea that hey, people are showing up to these things to play within constructs to have whatever outcome they want from them. Yeah, and I think it's uh, really important to have this, these conversations. And I, I'm loving that Paul and the rest of the team are, are willing to take this on. We're willing to talk about it because. I don't know. I feel like FTN is such a an engine for good and um, can be such a platform to talk about the, some of some of the ickier or some of the the more nuanced issues that are going on in the community, and we we don't want to run away from. It. But at the same time, we're not here to throw away our names or bad bash anybody or say right or wrong or or whatnot. We're pretty much just going to try and focus on where do we want to be and how do we grow from this? Because I feel like this is a we've had a bunch of these. Like uh, I was on I was on Charity Hammer last weekend, and I felt like the community's ability to put on a big charity extravaganza like that and same with the the nova open um charitable foundation that, that paul and i have been involved in for a couple of years that shows a level of maturity in our community and the things we're able to come together and, and produce and you know be greater than the sum of our of our individual selves hey, you and open the door like for me a, you open i want to talk about yeah. the, the nova open charitable foundation tickets are up for <laughs> up for grabs right now uh that is coming up towards the end of the month we're going to do close it out with a with a live show like we have been well we're going to jam 40k talk to artists showcase some things talk about the charities and that kind of stuff is a live stream for the Nova Open Travel Foundation. I'll get you the dates and times as we get there, but the raffles are live right now. Go and see those amazing things. Okay, back to the... And <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is a point of Great maturity. Fun. This is yeah, this is a point of maturity for the community and a, a space where we can you know step into where we want to be rather you know rather than where we were. So I'm happy I'm happy we're having this conversation. It could it could be a little bit of a debate. We'll see. Apparently well, apparently Red's got some some weapons lined up for me. I know you mentioned it. We're not going to talk about the specific events. We're not going to talk about specific people because that is r- almost irrelevant. Irrelevant because yeah. this type of thing happens or can happen and. We're going to talk about if it should, when it's okay, what degree in which it might be okay, when it's not okay, and you know when when maybe somebody crosses the line, or when it when you are potentially the overall effect could be damaging to your community. Yeah, exactly. Now that's I I love that you're you're talking about as in like damaging to the community, or because that's that's upon the clause upon which the people are finding this unacceptable. Picks of it the um. Um, bringing the game into disrepute or playing in a manner unbecoming of, you know, whatever we want to be. And so, I mean, of the first, first and foremost there, that's an acknowledgement that submarining, there's no rule against it. There is no overt saying, you know, you did not score all the available points that you could, bad boy, you know, bad or, or, Let's- or girl, you know. Let's break down. So maybe we need to define some things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Defining submarine is so. There's there's two ways. Sometimes we use it ironically. Oh, you took that L in round one. Yeah, submarine plan engaged. You really <laughs> you just just lost the game. Womp, womp. Uh, but what the what the tactic really means is that you are you're going under the water in wind path pairing. The winners play each other all the way as you get towards the top. But what you're doing is you are. Re- Potentially artificially through through mechanics of the game, not not just not reporting the right score. You are not scoring as many points as you possibly could in order to give yourself an easier game in the next round of the tournament. Red, have you got a? Have you got? Is, is that your def- how you define it as well? Because for my mind, yeah, it's it's choosing uh, not to, in where it breaks down for us is just choosing not to score points in the hope of uh, getting further into the tournament before you take a loss. So I'm not 
what I'm about to say, I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but I think it's important to talk about this. ITC code of conduct under the term of angle shooting. What do you think angle shooting is? To, like I've, I actually haven't read the definition. For my mind, it's taking advantage uh, of a, dis, dis, a disproportionate advantage to their inexperience, and they're leveraging that in order to you know win a game or gain advantage. So that would be... Uh, you know, a uh, gentleman's at his first couple of events, doesn't really know how stratagems works. And so, you know, you set them up ho- like horrifically for a gotcha that they didn't know was coming and, you know, give him a bad time. Okay. So, the, the, and I don't think that that is a wrong instance, but I, I think the ITC definition of uh, essentially a using a technicality within the game to create an uh, instance that could be interpreted as against the spirit of the game or is um, not sportsmanlike. I like the term not sportsmanlike was added there because I feel like that's what we're getting to. We're getting to, we really want to discuss how we want to conduct ourselves and what the what what are, what are we willing to accept and not accept on the table and co- conduct wise yeah right and so i think where this goes and again i'm not agreeing or disagreeing because i don't ultimately have to in a lot of cases um i think in a lot of cases it is absolutely between the players and the to right um mm-hmm. i think that the itc has moved in a direction where they are making a Trying to enable or empower TOs to to sort of seek out unsportsmanlike activity that is occurring and address with it before players before it creates a, a bad environment or bad game for a, for the players for the community yeah right? or, or alters the culture of that they that they wish to wish to promote yeah right back exactly. to that episode where we're we're gonna do one day about culture of culture constructing at your event yeah it's no, brewing I mean, it's it. a thing brewing it. <laughs> yeah yeah it's coming it's coming. Um, and so I think that that's the important part, right? Like I, I could go more into my opinion, but I, I think that that will play itself out as our, our conversation continues. Yeah, like sort of playing on like the, t- the technicality aspect of it. It's like, like I see it, like I've had it happen to me because I'm a newer player, but I used to word questions like, hey, how far does your model move, right? And they just tell you the stat, right? But then like... You know, there's there's stats, there's abilities, there's like all sorts of things that can modify that. And um, sometimes not being overly forthright about it is I consider that sort of angle shooting. Not, and it's not against the rules like they didn't lie or anything like that. But now it just means that I have to be um a little bit more careful how I word the questions. Yeah, yeah rather yeah. than the burden being on them to, do, to do, you know, to disclose things openly and honestly the burden is now all of a sudden on you the newer player to ask that's perfect right. questions at the perfect time which yeah isn't what we want that's right but that's how it is <laughs> yeah yeah right that's a great example i think yeah but honestly like i feel like i'm so young or young i'm so like new <laughs> in the in the hobby that i don't know all of the in- instances of angle shooting like that's just the one that i have personally come across well uh, we pretty much gave three different definitions just then like uh, i i talked to it as in like a gotcha you talked to it as in like a, a kind of manipulation of information and then the definition was somewhere between all those things plus many more yeah right yes and the the definition is very much open in order to again enable there is something to it right there there is some aspect of how it's done and it is not a cookie cutter thing that just you know you can you can apply in an easy fashion you absolutely have to take the situation but you know go from event to event you can't just say well, here's all the things that we've bracketed into this because you could arguably have, I think, you know, what some part of the community might consider unsportsmanlike versus the other. There are obviously some cases where the court of public opinion has has ruled well, uh, as in like ruled overall. Um, But there are also cases where there are quite clearly communities that are okay with certain aspects where if you did that same thing somewhere else, it would be considered unsportsmanlike. Um, and so I think that that's important to consider as well. Mm, so this has caused me a little bit, a bit of introspection in myself because I have submarine before, knowing, knowingly, and sure. will and plan to submarine. And I've got, a, I've actually got a, a couple of different, a, a, a um, couple of different examples, guys. Uh, and so I'm definitely somebody who needs to reflect upon how I want to conduct myself. Uh, I can tell you right now, there's been certain times in the game, and this, this is the best example, and of course the example that makes me feel best about it because I feel like this is the easiest one to justify. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, like, that's see, that's the slippery slope. 
I mean, that's exactly, uh, ex exactly. That's what we're getting, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> what what can you justify? Should any of it? Should you try and justify any of it, or should we just blanket say, hey, this is unacceptable and needs to change? So the example I've got is when Iron Hands was the thing, the big baddie, and they were 30, 35% of the meta. They were 50% of the meta in some events. I'd be going to events in Australia, and I was under a lot of pressure at the time to uh, perform to a certain level, but I wasn't willing to play Iron Hands. I, I was actually playing Death Watch at the time. But I knew Death Watch was a very good army at getting wins, not getting huge wins, and I chose to play them because of that. But Iron Hands were just getting big wins. They were just nonstop getting huge wins. And so I would make sure that I didn't get a huge win rounds one and two and three in the hopes that all the iron hand players would play each other for the first couple of rounds knock each other out and then hopefully i would only have to play one or two of them in you know in in theory to win the event rather than having to play three or four of them and in, in a yeah, continuous like path of of iron exactly hands exactly because you know in that meta if you if you do well all you have to all you all you get rewarded with is worse matchups yeah. Um, the better the better you do, the harder things get. And so the idea was, hey, take a get get a win, get a medium win. You know, if 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 possible, I wasn't you know walking and being like I'm going to brutalize somebody and run off objectives and things like that. Which is the example we've been given in the community. It was like, okay, when I've got the game in a, in a state in which I think I'm going to win. You know, we've been through you know turn four, turn five. I don't need to score any more points than this. You know, and this wasn't this wasn't saying I was going to score like you know 30, 40 points or with a win. This is talking about 50, 60, 70 points if we're talking about ninth edition metrics, rather than getting 90s and 100s. Um, and yeah, and just manage my score in such a way that I would have not have to get knocked out automatically by Iron Hands next round. And that would, and to my mind, I justified that by saying I was going to enjoy the event more as well because iron hands were not fun yep, to play winning super fun yep yeah yeah exactly winning super fun but also <laughs> having a competitive game super fun i'm much more the no i'm i'm kidding i'm i'm being game. somewhat facetious here just to yeah, 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 yeah. point and of, of course and so the justification was you know i'd much i'm going to enjoy my event more the event i'm attended to and i've paid money for if i don't get just auto clubbed by going second against iron hands next round that was justification hey if i instead of winning by 50 points and some some of these games i'm definitely saying yeah, i didn't have a choice i did the best i could and i got the result i could and there wasn't any any manipulation involved because i didn't have the opportunity because my opponents you know played in such a manner as well and yeah look and sometimes that worked then the last time i did it it didn't work <laughs> i i put I, I i walked too close to the line i lost the game because i tried to walk too close to the line i felt like a fool and i've never done it again and so that's the <laughs> that's the tightrope you've got to walk on these things i do um, i don't so, want to like derail the conversation but i i think that that it is a it it's a it's risky it's very risky but it's still a system it's a gameable system and and yeah like you know there, you can't there was no rule at the time then that was you know what mid eighth edition so towards the end of eighth edition uh, there was certainly no discussion about anything I was doing as being unethical which shows me and tells me the the the, the scenes maturing which I like you know the fact that we're having these ethical conversations but by all means like chime in what do you guys think about the, my actions then and please judge away. This is see. This is tough because I think that working the tournament to try to get the the long term victory is. I think it's kind of okay as long as you're not doing it at the expense. You know, either you're you're the enjoyment of the game with your opponent to degrading of the overall. I said what the turns the community. You're not uh, causing ill will to the other players or other people that would somehow impact their their desire to come back to the next tournament. You know, is it? Where where is the where is the fault if there is a fault and then how many contributing factors share in that fault if there is a fault? That's fair. So you're saying where's the line? Where's the acceptable not acceptable line? Because um, even even upon reflection, I have no problem with my actions then. I say, oh, cool. You were just trying to enjoy for for the, what you understood about the game then, and the and the field that was available to you. You just tried to do the best you could. Right, you're with trying what you trying to had. win. You have you have yeah, a path. I was trying to win by, yeah. by the by the the only path that I thought was reasonable for me to for me to go upon. You know, the other other, other argument is, oh, just take a better army, Adam. Don't be scared and go through all the the best uh, players. It's and best not lists. it's not quite that simple though, because when there's a lot of things that lead us to the tournament table. There's of course what we want to do, how we want to spend our weekend, what we want to play. Now look, I don't want to be coming off is like on a pedestal. I took Iron Hands during that period of time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but what, what I'm saying is there's there's lots of different things that lead people to that table. Uh, and so, and we're all, sometimes we're there for what could be different reasons. That's true. Now, I'm, I'm sure there's other ex examples. And I think the reason that, um, you know, I don't want to be disparaging towards any party, but the reason that this has come up is because this was such an extreme example of this. This was a gentleman who was, I suppose, 
by submarining was um, harming their opponent's enjoyment of the game. Yeah, because it, it was very so blatant and intentional. And yeah, now, yeah, exactly. I, so I'm not saying that you should hide it better and that makes it okay. I really want to no, talk no. about what is okay. What do we think? Yeah, well, I, I was about is, to say I'm grateful. Acceptable. I'm, I'm grateful that this gentleman chose to do it openly, honestly, and it, with full knowledge of um, you know, with of full knowledge of the community. In fact, he told the TO what he was in what his intentions were and how he intended to conduct himself. And it's only because he chose to do that we're able to have this conversation as a community. So, in some terms, I'm I'm grateful for his actions, and well, I, I, I at least I applaud him for the honesty. Our whole goal of even discussing this is about that evolution and maturity as as a group. And and while there may be some kind of feel bad experiences around this, is that justified? Is it just part of it? Is it um, are, if we were to patch that, does that create an, another problem that's worse? I mean, I don't know. Just saying, is, is it is it even something to worry about fixing? It's tough, right? Like, there's it, a lot going on. It it is tough, but I mean, as somebody who's a new player and a developing player, um, but yet not completely oblivious, and I would be able to see what he was doing, I would feel like I don't belong at that tournament, that I am a nuisance and just a stepping stone, somebody to be manipulated to get exactly mm -hmm. where the player across from me at the table wants to go. That's how I would feel. Mm. And that's what we want to avoid, isn't it? That's exactly yep. the issue, I suppose, we're going for. So we're going into this against. Um Look, I don't have a, I don't have an incredible array of answers. I know Red's got a bunch. I've got, a, I've got an exam. I've got, see, I'm in this really weird conundrum, yeah, where I think if you have the skill and ability to do what this player was doing, good for you. You're, you're in a system that allows you to do that and it rewards you from doing that. So why shouldn't you? And that leads us to the, you know, to a, to a bunch of different, <laughs> uh, questionable, questionable end games because that first thought that is like, hey, wow, that shows some real mastery of the game that you can manipulate your score in such a manner that you can set up to you know get, get yourself in a better position for the future blah 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 um you know good for you a game is going to game but yeah the end result of that is that we start to have this divide of being like is this what we want the scene to be do we want the scene to be divided between players who can and cannot do we want people to feel disenfranchised or unwelcome to attend events because they don't feel like they have an opportunity and no it's not it's absolutely not in fact i find that thought 10 times worse than any thought of, you know, pat on the back, uh, you did well for, you know, submarining. Um, I but think I can... probably everyone on this show and probably a lot of listeners, we've all been that person that's lost to the person that's gone all the way and won the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's true. <laughs> I mean, so this is, I don't want to make this conversation be about like sour grapes of, we somebody won and somebody lost that's it's about it's about how they did it we're talking about how it happens not the fact that it mm. happens so i've got an example that i know red's got a rebuke for and so i want well, to line him up for this one and well, get him loaded locked and loaded I can and it's a good one too but let me if i can ask a couple questions before we get to that one because i think that this set, sets some pretty good perspective too i think that there is a ton of good reflection to come out of this and so let's say if the the person in question of this this entire scenario instead of doing okay so one instead of communicating their intent um up front let's say that they instead of uh because this the scenario here is essentially playing against someone on a table you wipe them from the table and then you just don't take objectives to max score things you just play it out okay well i'm i'm only going to get this many points because you understand that that's how you can submarine effectively doing that right mm. uh, well, you, just, what, you just need a win you need a right. one more point than the the other guy right right and so uh you know you craft that scenario so if what if and i'm not saying that it's as likely because it's much easier once you've removed the player from the table to do these things right uh but if Let's say in a hypothetical situation, they instead of doing that, that they actually just play the game, even though they know they're winning to whatever extent, like they were going to do what they're going to do uh, more or less, but they just do it on the front end. Right. So they keep you on the table where you can't do much uh, or enough to uh, effectively do anything to them. Right. So like. Just as an example, Tanya, you know, you're talking about how demoralizing it would be if someone did that to you to a certain extent, because uh, they're just using you to to one way. But if, if instead, and I'm I'm there's a second phase to this, if they're playing against you, Tanya, and yep. it's you and me playing, and I 
take out most of your guard to the extent that you've like I can do whatever I want, right? I've, this is just a hypothetical scenario that I've taken out most of your guard. I've got corn berserkers or whatever, and I'm going to be able to hold whatever I want, but I've essentially pushed you into a corner where you can't do anything. And then for the next six rounds of the game or whatever, three, four, five, whatever, um, I just prevent you from doing anything, but I don't act- actively seek the objectives myself effectively accomplishing the exact same thing just with more engagement does that make it sound better or more okay that's my question i know that was very drawn out to me it's exactly the same okay good it's exactly the same yeah what what about you adam what do you think so the example you just gave is the one that i that i did i mean not not to that extent like you get to a crux point of the game the game you, you 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 play your play your your off or whatever play in whatever manner you're going to do to get the game into a winning position and then just maintain that position to the end and, and yep. um, when you when you could have forced the issue tabled them taken away all their points especially something that's not that's, you're not incentivized incentivized to do it anyway by the way as long as i get like what paul just said as long as i get one more point than you i don't care if it's 99 to 100 does not matter um you know or it's it's one one point to two points doesn't matter there's sure. that, 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 that's the thing we're going to talk about later um because i'm not in, in, disincentivized to allow you scoring points as long as i'm going to score more and so when you get to that point where and this this is the way that you know i i would submarine you get to that crisis point where the game is going to go your way and it's easily to maintain it going your way you then therefore there's no more incentive to harm your opponent's enjoyment of the game let allow them to play whatever metrics they have or whatever resources remain to them and then you just you just do the same um and then it, it becomes a fight either fights yeah yeah exactly you know i'm just going to sit on these three objectives to your two objectives that means i'm going to win by about 10 to 15 points you know, you can try and push me off them, but I've you know I've got ten Deathwing Terminators on this one, and I've got every buff imaginable, and you have to go through them to get the other two. So pretty much, I can just stay here and win. Um, okay. And Dark Angels is a good example of that because that's exactly how Dark Angels play. Not that I've done that with Dark Angels, by the way. I, I, I've stopped submarining since Eighth Edition. <laughs> Look, um, we're, we're not to the point where submarining is is bad. You don't you can admit it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, kidding, I, know. I, I don't think I've played enough games of Ninth Edition to get good enough to submarine <laughs> in this edition yet. So you know, I haven't had the opportunities. <laughs> so. Let me push it to phase two of this question. So if I do all that, and you know, Tanya, you said there's no difference, and 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 Adam, you've said this is is really like the you know, it's more or less you've done this, and, and Dark Angels do this to a certain extent. If I make the game engaging in such a way that while I'm doing it, let's say Tanya, you know, like for every whatever, I'm still. Let's say I do exactly that. But I make the game something that where you're having fun. So like one of my favorite people, Horton, who also plays corn, who uh, I've I've had such a wonderful time playing with. He has a thing where like you're playing. If he kills something, he gives you like candy. If you kill something, he gives you candy. Essentially, every action ends with him giving you some kind of like concession prize. Dog stuff right there. (laughs) Well, but it's 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 how he like tries to make it a good time for both people, regardless of if he's losing or winning or whatever. So if there's a way that they can make it, that the player can make it enjoyable for both people, but that's still accomplished, the exact same thing that we've been talking about is done just on the front end instead of the back end, like the real world scenario we have. Does that make it more okay if you're having a good time, although they're still doing that to you? So I think it makes it less unethical. I think because you're not damaging, you're, you're trying at least you're trying to not damage their your opponent's enjoyment of the game. Um, but I think it's still the same thing. Like you know, it, as, as, as are you saying that you know it might not be first degree crime, it's second degree crime now? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm asking. I actually think it's probably the same. Okay. No. Um, I... But I have a couple questions. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Why is nobody, like, if you know that the person that you're going up against, or you have suspicions that the person that you're going up against next is newer or maybe not as skilled as you, and you felt that you could be honest with the TO about what you were going to do. Why couldn't you have that conversation before you started the game? You go to your opponent and be like, look, this is the situation in the current meta. And this is how I feel. And I want us to play really hard until it's quite clear that one of us is going to come out on top. Sure. That, that is uh, that's a different situation. That's collusion. 
But you're you're playing so hard until you absolutely know that there's nothing the other person it's, can it, do. It would still be considered collusion because then you're having a discussion about what the outcome of the game could be or should be and not letting things naturally take its course. But it's not going to naturally take its course because this person's going to pull their punches. It, it's like it, they don't care about the social contract. And the social contract at a tournament is great because you know everybody there, in theory, is going to give you their best. I, I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I just say that uh, the, on the other side of that is um, once you start to have a dialogue about what the outcome of the game could be, then you are creating an unfair scenario for the table next to you. Okay, so then is it not collusion with the TO if you told the TO that you were going to do this? It, it is less collusion. I don't... <laughs> It's less collusion, if that's even such a thing, uh, because once you are still moving your pieces, you're you are essentially moving unhindered by your opponent because your opponent can't do anything to you, but you're still doing something that is a physical action and not dependent upon this just kind of understanding, other than the understanding of letting the time run out in the round or finishing out the rounds of the game or whatever. I don't see it as any different. If you no, play your hardest, you play yeah. your, your you both play your hardest until the other person can't do anything else. I just don't really see the difference. Yeah, I, well, that's, that's what we're trying to hash out, I think, or at least uh, come to some consensus on. And yeah. then the, the other part of the, the discussion you were talking about, like giving out candy or whatever to mm -hmm. like somehow lessen the blow. But like a number of top players, even at tournaments, when they get matched up against somebody who's developing or new or whatever, they still take that as a teaching moment. And that to me is a lot better better than walking off objectives or anything like that. Like if you really like if you are that skilled that you know you're going to win the game before you even get in there and you know you're going to walk off objectives and you know that you you could do whatever you want, you can absolutely also teach that person how to be a better player. That's your level and I think that's almost your responsibility. It's a fair point. Too. I do quite like that line. I think uh, it's respons great. responsibility responsibility we have to each other responsibility we have the to the community um yeah i think that's a great line before we actually adam i think this is that's a perfect stepping off point to your the example you want to bring in beautiful all right i love to try and get a cheeky little historical example in every episode <laughs> mostly because it activates red in amazing ways um <laughs> but uh so, okay, in, in the tales of historical battles, historical wars, there's always this thing called positioning. Um, you know, you never want to be the one who's charging up the hill into the into the arches, into the, the spearmen and whatnot. You want to be right. the one charging no. down the hill. You want to be the one with the, the flanking maneuver opportunities. Right? High ground is always better. We know this. Mm. Yeah, Kenobi, said so. uh, Kenobi, you know? Yeah, yeah. Kenobi <laughs> taught us that. Um, even though he beat high, he beat, he beat <laughs> never mind. He actually he tricked, he tricked them in trying to get the high ground so we could cut exactly. them in half. Was, and he was ready. Yeah. Never mind. Um, it's the long game. So the example I have is that this gentleman who was who was performing this, he did so with the foreknowledge of the lists he was likely to face towards the end of the event because he knew what the the, the meta of the event was and who the other strong players were. And he was of the opinion that these players had taken lists that counted his and they had a better opportunity. He had a better opportunity to beat them if he played them on certain missions. And of course, this was done with force, foresight of the players in attendance, the list they were taking, and the missions that would be played at the event. Also, the terrain, which can't be overstated either. So this huge amount of foresight, e.g. he knew what the lay of the land was. He knew the likely battlefields he would engage upon these people with, and he wanted to manipulate the state of play to such an extent that he could play them from an advantageous position. We have seen generals fight wars at nauseam and be decided by positioning. Napoleon was a great one for it. Um, and, but the, the example I have is um, Caesar versus Pompey. Now, I learned about this initially from the, the, the series Rome, because I went, after I heard about the battles watching the series, I went and researched the battles because I wanted to know what actually happened. Because I had a hell did, had Pompey lose when he had like Caesar cornered and starving and like a two to one, you know, advantage in men. And um, and essentially what, what would happen in those battles was that, you know, like, five days a week you you'd get your men out into into battle ready formations um you know and you'd position yourselves array yourselves for battle and then 
uh, you stand around for six, eight hours or whatever in the heat, and then you pack up and do it again tomorrow. Until such a time as one of you couldn't, you know, had to commit to the battle. And so you'd have this constant positioning and repositioning of forces, everyone trying to gain a positional advantage by geography or by, you know, politi- politics back home or supply train or logistics, all these things. Um, when Napoleon comes in, Napoleon was the king of logistics um, in a lot of ways, you know, army, army moves on its belly. But this is where it comes in, because technically that's what I feel like this guy was doing. This guy was setting himself up for the advantage of positioning and essentially of the battlefield of his choosing, because he wanted to play these guys upon his terms, not upon his opponents. Or And he was doing working within the constructs given to him to, to do that, in order to do that. And now we're at a point where we're saying, hey, Adam, this isn't, this isn't a reenactment of a battle. This isn't a reenactment of the Civil War, you know, where things are already been in place. This is, a, like Tanya said, this is a social contract between two competitors trying to meet their own goals and their own expectations. And to some, there is an absolute line between that because there are, there's two separate things there. The social contract that says, hey, I'm going to do my best on this table in order to reach my goals, and so are you. And while we're doing that, we should take every effort to make sure we're both enjoying this experience. Every effort should be made to maintain the enjoyment of the experience, mm-hmm. regardless of what our end goals are, regardless of what we're trying to get. Um, so yeah, that's my example, and that's my spiel. Mm. Time to hit me, Red. No, you you really, Tanya, sprung the trap on you before you even got to the example. Um, I, I think that the the social contract deal really the separation between the real world history uh, mm. example of warfare, where warfare um, arguably the greatest game that consumes all things player pieces dice money everything in it unfortunately it, it is the you know the greatest wagers are made in such cases uh you talk about caesar and pompey magnus and um i mean he absolutely had mm. it it was a mind game that that caesar was able to even pull it off uh and the maneuvering right that that's what it was this positioning it was a, a position of maneuver okay if i get here and i'm positioned in this way i can do this much damage to you in such a state that you will never recover and if i mean essentially people would believe that they they it was predictive right by how they were positioned and so if we engaged in such a way i would lose so much to the extent that i would never be able to recover or you would have such sway or influence over me and, and the reality is is that as, as amazing and remarkable as those endeavors are um the game that we're playing while the war game is an aspect of it the the game is only just an aspect and the social engagement really is far more uh i think key and pivotal and I think that there's some people, you know, you talk about it. Okay, here are my. I, I, some people go into it and they disagree with us. They they absolutely disagree with us mm. when it comes to the the competitive aspect. No, I did not go into this with a social contract. I did not go into this with the expectation that you had to, uh, you know, I have to cater to you to enjoy this game. There's a finite amount of fun at the table, and you're gonna yeah. have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, that's, and that's the un, that's the unfortunate part of it is is that uh, you know you asked my opinion at the beginning is that my opinion is that yes I I totally agree with what you said Tanya and that I do think that you go into the it is a a multiplayer game and it is not just for my sole benefit but our collective benefit that we play this game there is a lot to enjoy through it there's some people will win some people lose it's a it's a dice game it's not a matrix game in such a way that it is foretold in all cases um it is statistically possible for someone to just roll ones all games is it likely no it's not but you need to watch more of my games it's very likely (laughs) Well, that's what I'm saying. And so like, it's just not, it's, this is not, I I don't recommend to anyone who thinks um, that they don't owe anybody anything going into a game. I'm sorry. I I don't recommend going to large events then because it is very much a community event. It is not a singular entity event. Um, And if someone does think that and they still go into it, like, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd be more happy to, buy you a drink and socialize with you in that case, then play a game with you. Um, because I, I think that there's other things to get out of it. And that's just the reality of the, this aspect. We're not going into this wagering each other's lives over it. And so there's no need to treat each other like Pompey and Magnus did. The, 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 the supremacy and rulership of Rome is not at stake oh, along man. with our families 
and everybody else that puts their names behind our banner. Like that's not something that we need to be concerned about. Reality is, is that we need to be more concerned about the welfare of one another. Um, and, and are we all enjoying ourselves as we continue to want to play these games together with each other? In my opinion, I know that that becomes esoteric and steps beyond just our, our, our game of toy soldiers, but I really do think that that's the key aspect to this. Well, and, I mean, and one of the, the things I enjoy the most. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's, you're, you're stating it, but that's, that's the way you feel. I mean, I know that I also know that's how you do it, but you know, other people feel differently. They feel like the stakes sure. are higher and that, that does, yeah. but, I, but I was, so I think it's easy to dismiss things when just by saying that, uh, sure. I think that anyone can find, uh, if, you know, if you look hard enough or you want to find some type of justification for anything. Yep. No, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I think that there's, there's definitely, um, and that's what I was talking about before, different different environments, different communities. There are communities that are absolutely bent, uh, uh, bent unfortunately, has a bad connotation to it. They, they are very focused and emphatic on the – I mean, Adam, you know, you said we, – we talked about this. As soon as this event began to arise, we were actually talking about this. And you mentioned how, you know, your community, that it, it is considered – it is an acceptable thing to submarine in some cases. It is an acceptable yeah. thing to manage it. And I honestly think that there is an environment for that to a certain extent, but it does take community buy-in for the group to be okay with that. If they are yeah. okay with that and they find that as something that is an acceptable method to manage an event, to get through it, then that's something else entirely. And it's it also goes into communicating, making sure if there's new people that they understand that that's a, a, ma- a method and technique. I mean, when you go into other sports – and other events, uh, an example, race car methods, right? So how do how do uh, race car tracks and how do they they method through their laps and how they're going to get there? Like not all of them just get up front and run it out, right? Horse racing is not on just a matter of okay, get up front, go as hard as you can and win it. You have to pace yourself certain ways, mm-hmm. and so there is a whole other methodology I think behind this where. In, in a lot of cases, we are looking at ourselves and the broader events, but I do think there are appropriate communities um, and appropriate environments where this is not as unacceptable as we're kind of pushing it to certain degrees, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, well, so I, I agree that in the... Like I think there should almost we should almost start to get into a point of distinction now because I do love the term event like you are going to a Warhammer or, or a 40k event and, and, and then there's the tournament. And I think at a tournament, stuff like this should be acceptable. Like, or, or, or not, if not acceptable in this duration, because this was a very extreme case that was brought to light. At least not discouraged, you know, because recognized the, 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 as part of the the, yeah, the event. The I, I don't know, and, maybe. Uh. Yeah, part part of the meta game. And I, this is a, this is something I talk about with people a lot, especially with some new players, because there's a lot of different levels of playing a competitive tournament. There is playing for the terrain and the tables. There's there's metering for that. There's metering for the field, as in the armies and the factions you expect to see. And then there's metering for the the caliber of the event. There's metering for the other players there. And these are all different levels upon which you can operate at if you can reach that level, if you want to, if you have that drive or or that. But yeah, so this gentleman was playing at a level where he was metering for the event. He was metering for the other players there he wasn't so much metering for um factions he was metering for the fact that he good players were playing lists that could beat him so he's taking all the things into account and found his win path through through metering at that level now i think they were almost coming to a crux point yeah because this is this the gentleman we're talking about in particular is about as close as you can be to a professional player without you know you know being assigned you know pepsi on his shoulder professional player you know what i mean um and but i think there should be a realm where what he did is justified I do, but I do not. I do not like what he did in the context of where it occurred. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Um, just, just yeah, like we sure. joke about the, you joke about the Olympics, yeah. And oh, uh, I want to do a correlation of to speed walking. This game. If we, and this, this is mm, perfect. <laughs> I actually don't want to do a correlation of speed walking. I just happen to know a lot more about speed walking than I did two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Sounds like someone else had a rabbit hole they went down this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when you got it, when the Olympics was just on, yeah? Yeah. I wasn't in the Olympics. Just putting it out there, guys. Shock and horror. I wasn't in the Olympics. And so when I, but, but I could, you know, technically I could go to a tennis, a tennis court where there is a professional player there, challenge them to a game and get handed to me. It could happen. Very well could happen. At the same time, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, Olympics professional. I, you know, I could go to a, a world-class caliber, 
you know, per person and get absolutely smoked. And that's what's happening on some of these tables. You, the, the, the difference in what this player was able to do and able to manipulate shows a disparity to such an extent that this guy should be almost operating his own pool or gearing down in or when he operates in this pool, p- player pool for the enjoyment of others. And I think that's what that's almost where we're at with this discussion, yeah? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think that the situation... I mean, let me, let me speak aggressively. Oh, just a man, little bit. let the man speak. Oh, no. <laughs> You try doing that submarine stuff around me. You ain't winning the tournament because I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I'm swinging for the fences happened. every time, and there's tons of people just like me. It's like it, the situation in which that occurs and where it will be fruitful is so remote. Mm-hmm. That's what happened to me, dude. I, I tried to walk that line. I tried to be a big brain, clever boy, and it backfired. Yeah, so it uh, seems like the only there's just so much downside, such as being a fun sponge for people, and it rarely it. ever working out for you. It's so so on. and again so I don't want to like derail like yeah I think that y- you're right I think we're talking about uh, different types of events and people should know that's it we, you know in this culture crafting episode that I promise will exist eventually <laughs> you kind of know what you're you're getting into and that's you know what the how things are going to happen around here it's a very hmm. powerful cultural thing of just how things are done around here that's a that's a business principle uh, that goes beyond any core handbook, any tournament pack, or whatever. It's just how thing and people become aware of that. But it, it, but see, and this is just when does it pay? Off? Rarely does it pay off. I mean, we all yes, I have lost. I've played in a tournament where the prize was a whole army, and I and I lost that to somebody on table three. Did they set up? They could not have engineered it to where they were playing on table three mm-hmm. and end up lapping us on table one and two. You know, that's just the way it works out. And it worked yeah. out really great for them, but you know, they weren't necessarily submarining. That's just the way they, they were, we were all playing. Yeah. And uh, that's a perfect segue into what probably the next level of this was technically what this gentleman did while against the code of contact was not against the format of the event. And so we need to introspectively, we need to look at um, if we, if we find this unacceptable and it sounds like we as a community have decided we do, um, especially the CEO of that event also obviously found this. Definitely feels greasy and would be something that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ex- it, it, that's, that's a great way of, describing it it's just like you just feel a bit off about it don't you yeah oh yeah and and if and if if uh if someone wins of that way you don't know what may uh sabotage your future attendance mm. because of that yeah, kind of stuff so um, so uh, the code of contact is i mean I, I i think that's a it's a real thing so when when there were you know just a handful of people in a community playing in a tournament you 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 would establish what those bounds are but now with tons of folks playing in tournaments you know and so that's quality, quality problems we're yeah, having right now call call an extension you know of, of that is and then and a desire to more formalize to make this competition mean something mm. past that plastic trophy or that land raider or whatever we took home as a prize we want it to mean something more yeah you want it to, to stand for not the person who was able to manipulate their score better it was the person who was the best player Player on the day, yeah, but t- t- let's take a break because yeah. I want to uh, Greg uh, stick in a word from our sponsors, then we can come come back and chat about this. It's not to you know before we've been going on for about it, but this people might mm. want a, a moment of respite. Respite. Let's see you on a second. FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com, and don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. And we are back. I hope everyone has had their long rest. They got their spell slots back. Still got everybody it's here. Thick, it's a thick episode, guys. It's It's got some heft to it. <laughs> uh, so we, we talked a little bit about potentially, like if 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 we don't want this to happen, then you know, the, the construct of the event may have to change. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and that's in a lot of cases where we see, okay, that was not intended. That's something. And, and we see it with the game, right? We see it where FAQs come out, uh, erratas and such to, to modify the mechanics of the game. In the same vein, I, I think that we find ourselves really where it is in our best interest to modify the format because sometimes, and, and you know, there's different the, the ETC has said, hey, we don't think that certain aspects of the format is correct or not or incorrect or what have you. And I, I think that that's important um, because you look at, OK, well, who, where in the Adam's great question, 
where in the 40k rulebook does it say how to rule, run an event and how that event should be done wind path what's the the 40k standard of wind path it really doesn't i mean you can go off the the events that are being running well there's an event being run this weekend uh our good tpm might plug later but apart from that they really haven't ruled about how things should be done or how events should be constructed they've eventually left that up to interpretation or left that up to whatever we find works for us yes and i think that's huge i personally think that that's a very big deal uh because that that means that we're we're really deciding our own wind path methodology along the way and that really gives us the agency to change or adapt the system and i think that there are some good suggestions out there and how to go about that as far as um you know considering maybe battle points and that mechanism is not as good as we think it is in regards of managing the uh, you know a tournament event in such a way and maybe we need to consider differentials and margins of victory and uh, how that goes because yes you could still use battle points but then look at the differential between those and how does that play out into an event and how does that help determine skill and so that's mm. one thing right that's that's i think that that's more event specific but i still think that as our player base goes and we talk about really like a lot of the driving motivations for these cases for these different players and how they go about it uh, we could even take it in the next step further and talk about how we look at it from a uh, almost a strategic perspective which i would consider the itc rankings right mm. um, and how we go about that okay so I, i've already proposed differentials margin of victory for events but then player rankings and itc points if you are suddenly considering that okay you know so take like for example tanya you mentioned playing against new players if there was something of an elo concept introduced uh or used let's say it was already introduced maybe uh and then if we implemented it to such an extent that okay if you play against someone that is newer or not even a uh, an extended track record or something like your your essentially your gains in the strategic environment would not be as worthwhile one way or the other and so you're doing yourself damage to certain extents by by engaging persistently there um and, and that there there's give and take there right like there's absolutely an argument to be had and and some of those other considerations of the environment but I, I still think that there are things that we consider. We don't just have to throw our hands up and say, mm. "Oh, well, that you know that that's the game we play," because um, it's yeah. just not. It is not something that we have to just sit back and and endure if we're not satisfied with it. Yeah, and there's there's 100 percent pros and cons to all of these different format changes. Like, so the one you just suggested, the one where we take battle points into consideration. Um, the the counterpoint to that and so like i said there are, there are pros and cons to pretty much every tournament format you can find and it's just about being open enough as a community to find the one we think works best for us not just accepting the one we have because i think that's the last one we want just just accepting mm -hmm. the status quo and just always getting what we've always got but um so the the, the counterpoint to the, the battle point system is that it rewards the player who puts the other guy in the ground who puts the other player in the ground it rewards the, per it rewards the person who stomps hardest stomps fastest and if i was to play say uh you know paul plays Tanya and Tanya just dunks on Paul and beats him by 80 points uh, because she has like an overwhelming list advantage or goes first with, with you know, let's say, you know, add mech of a, on a bowling ball game. Like those orcs. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, and I play against Red. And me and Red have like the game from like heaven. It was just incredibly tactical, deep, back and forth, like, you know, switch and, you know, all this stuff. And we, we, we have a five point game, but Tanya scored 100. Um, and she continues to score hundreds because she, let's say she just goes first a couple of times or she's, she's just on the right list at the right time and it's ultra powerful. And I and Red and I just struggle all the way through the event, but end up with the same five and as Tanya does, but Tanya's got, you know, a hundred more battle points. It doesn't really reward, um, how hard the games were. It doesn't take into effect how hard the games were. Um, and I, that's why I really like the strength of schedule concept, the concept being mm -hmm. that, um, the the strength of the players you played against is taken into account with your standing in addition. And so I like, I, I think ELO is the premium best way we can do this always. ELO is just, just such a great system. Um, and I don't know why it hasn't been adopted wholesale, but um, battle, battle points, strength schedule and ELO together, I think gets as close to uh, about as perfect as I think we can get. And I'm, look, I'm probably wrong. I'm not an expert on this. There's just been my experience and the experience of having access to awesome brained people like Joshua Diffie and people of his ilk. Been a lot of discussion of this is like man why would a tournament organizer even bother to run events when there's all this when there is yeah. someone's 
always going to find a little bit of fault in whatever they do. Mm. Sure. Every, everybody, thank you, local TO. If you go to a, if you go to a tournament, yeah. just realize, you know, they're, they're essentially – so you think about – you go to the movies, yeah? You go to the cinema, and you watch one movie that you really enjoyed. You go to a tournament – you go to a 40K event, and you can watch three, four, five, six, nine movies that you really enjoyed. And that, that TO is the executive producer, director, editor, um, you know, all that stuff. They are, they are literally – they make the film for you, that, for you to enjoy. With no so every exaggeration. Time, no, zero exaggeration. None at, at all. <laughs> 85, 90% of every tournament organizer throughout the globe that I've ever encountered is doing it because they want to make a fun event for the players that show up. Right. Mm. I mean, just yeah. that's it. Solid 90 plus percent of the people that I know that are running tournaments want to just put on an entertaining weekend or day for the people that show up. Spot on. So we should not discourage them from doing it because it is an that's entertaining right. day or a weekend for us to show up and do. <laughs> what we're talking about is the, is the, the, I don't want to say the fringe, but you know, we're talking, talking about like pushing us towards I don't know, whatever we perceive that next level is. How do we make a more perfect system? And I, I want to coin this discussion. This isn't a discussion of right or wrong. I feel like this is a growing pain discussion. We're in a position of growth yeah, where it. we're trying to go to a new level of what we find acceptable and acceptable. And I think it's a great place to be. As much as people want to possibly uh, be have consternations or be disparaging towards whatever happened, has happened here, I think overall this will be a good thing for the community. Oh, that whole necessity is the mother of invention. I mean, that's a that's a true yes, adage. Well, yep. You know, and look, mm. and we're talking about things that really, depending on where you're playing or what you're doing, might not even be a problem. I mean, this is we're not. I don't want to say it's a problem. We're just discussing if this is your problem, then the, there are tools to th- there are ways to maybe think about doing something about it. And you're yeah, in the and the in the nature of the system, it, you are empowered to do so as an organizer or talk with your 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 community about do you, you know. Do you want to limit the ability to do this or not? Love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's been a great discussion, a very healthy discussion. Absolutely. And we managed to do it and give, oh, I shouldn't say this, and we managed to do it and give zero love to the two new codexes that came out this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll hate us. They'll, we do, just don't remind them that we, <laughs> all the T-Sons players <laughs> and the great up players get their pitchforks out. Rubble, rubble, rubble. <laughs> If I can, I want to say that I put something in practice that I yammered on about a couple of weeks ago. Mm. So I think it's important to mention. Fill the beans. <laughs> I need well, to know. <laughs> okay. So I mentioned that I've had these two character models, two figures on my desk, painting desk, for a long, long time because I knew it would only take me four or five hours to get them done. And so they just sat there and never got done because they were always just one painting session away. Well, I'm happy to report they are done. Sly Marbo and the Cadetian Colonel, you know, the guy with the power fist pointing, uh, have been painted. They are done, based. Have not been sealed yet, but will be will be done. I've actually I got one more coat of paint to put on Sly Marbo's uh, shirt uh, Dude. because it looks good the way it is, and I actually thought it was done. But no, I really want to bring it up one more color. Well done, man! I should always be congratulated when you get when you, you the pile of shame diminishes. That's so that's it. But they've been sitting there. I don't want to say that they, you know they have been mocking me or taunting me or whatever. But it is. It's like you, you, it's easy for us to put it off. Oh, it'll wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow, and those days mm-hmm. just stack up, and so you don't get it. You don't get it done. And you know, I'm like you know what? Got to practice what we what we preach. Got to get in there and do it. And it enjoyed a paint. And it way it took, it did to you know because they're they have similar colors on both miniatures, so you can kind of. Keep, you know, you work within a certain grouping of paint pots and you can work pretty efficiently and get, get these things done. And I'm happy with them. And all their chunky highlights. I'm a chunky highlighter. <laughs> I am also a chunky highlighter, actually. <laughs> it's part of my style. I'd like to say it's become my style because there's not getting any better. <laughs> Embrace it. Embrace <laughs> not, it. Not going to be any less chunky, but they're done. I put some pictures up on Instagram at Fights with Dice and on Twitter at Warmaster underscore TPM. If you're curious. Nice, man. Yeah. Well I'm, done. Yeah, I think they turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with them. And that, that figure, I hope that that Caddish and Colonel comes out in wide release at some point because it's it's a cool model. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I know a lot of people who are just not, not annoyed that they didn't get one, just like just wanted one so much. Oh, no, it's easy. So yeah. much. The FOMO, the FOMO is real. and Yeah. But it's these character models are really cool. Even with Sly, you know, I, I looked at him like, man, do I really want to paint the eyes? I did. Yes. I went in and I painted the eyes. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's nuts. I don't do that. 
Yeah, I paint. So I have a question. Yeah. Do you paint the eyes before or after? Ooh. I, I, so I get to a certain part of the face done. Like I'll base coat the face. And before I get to that final highlight on the face, that's when I paint the eyes because I can go in and color, like correct, inevitably when I make them just... Janky. <laughs> just, just googly eyed. <laughs> Yeah, that's like how I was I do doing it, it comically on purpose. That's how. <laughs> that's how bad they can be. And then I go back and clean it up some. And you know, from three feet away, they ain't, the eyes ain't bad. Nice. Yeah, the eyes ain't bad. I'm real happy with it. So, you know, that's it. You did do. You got some figures that are there. You know, you can do it in four or five hours. Go ahead and do it. Nothing stopping you. But you know, whatever reason you've created that day to, to do it. <laughs> Which I know the reason it's I mean, that's why I didn't say excuse reason you know yeah we could find reasons but uh, let's just get it done and then keep each other accountable that's, why, that's one of the reasons I post on the social media stuff is just to kind of almost like set these kind of chains of accountability up uh, along the way and one of my buddies this is a bit of an aside not exactly what I want to talk about he's been assembling all these miniatures and he said he's like I don't know where to start I'm afraid I'm going to mess up afraid yeah. he's going to mess up the painting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're never going to get any better unless you do it. You can look at tutorials, you can get a good idea, you can, but really you've just got to, you've got to ultimately get comfortable with how the paints and your brushes work. Whichever paints or brushes you're, you're, you're trying to use, you got to get comfortable with it and you can't do that without just doing it. I mm. actually think that if you feel like you're scared of messing up your models, one, stop watching the tutorials because they could yes. be adding to the intimidation factor. <laughs> and Fair. Two, I think that sometimes there's a great power in taking your air quotes mistakes and just incorporating those into your style so that it becomes something that is more intentional in your painting. And I think that makes it a more positive experience altogether. And then maybe as you you go along painting, you might decide to keep those air quote mistakes as part of your style or you might you know through just painting models you might learn how to not do them anymore and then you can choose like mindfully choose to get rid of them as they don't suit you anymore my actual advice to them was like yo they're your your models you're not messing anything up just you know don't compare it to the next folks models you know just paint what you can but i really think you block in the colors, you know, get a, get a, take your time, do a solid base coat. And what I, I when especially when we're painting a boot, I'm probably going to get some paint on the pants, you know, whatever. But then I touch it up. I mean, there's a series, there's a long series of touch-ups on models and that you may never get past that. You may never be able to paint whatever the pouch exactly right the first time without touch. Don't worry about that. It's more important that you just get a painted bottle and get it on the table and ultimately be happy with it. And honestly, like nine times out of 10, if your colors are striking, people won't notice your mistakes. Oh, fair point. Pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> just, I gotta, I gotta try it. that one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Go bold. Go bold. Yeah. And just, just do it. That's, that's the hobby segment. More to come on that. Uh, Tanya, you were going to be doing, you said you had some ideas for finishing moves. Yeah. You want me to do it now? Oh, no. Well, we got to, so we got to tune in for next week. Got to have some kind of teaser. Oh, teaser for next week. All right. Yeah, moves. But this weekend, hmm. depending on when the show goes up, I may be doing some live streaming from the Games Workshop or Orlando. Warhammer 40,000 open tournament Amazing on Warhammer TV. Mm. Kind of a big deal. I'm pumped. I can't wait. Can't wait to talk about games. Can't wait to see the games. Can't wait to interact with folks in the chat. Uh, going to try to be exciting, entertaining. You never know what's going to happen in a live show. So you might as well tune in and watch. I'm going to watch. Also, that's what I wanted to mention that. Hopefully the show goes up and done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on full. If you missed it, <laughs> or the show came because the show came out late uh then go and see if it's on their twitch uh would really love the support and seeing everybody tuned in so that's been a heavy show this week heavy heavy yeah and i don't know if we solved any problems but i really want to like we can if there's any takeaways i think just empowering people to to, to create the the kind of events that they want to play in that their that their groups want to play in and you'll, you'll probably find an audience for it, no matter what it is. No, no. Yeah, I'm just happy. Hopefully, we've raised some awareness about some of the the, pl- the places and things people might want to might want to go in with the community in the future. Everyone, just take a minute, think about how you feel about this. Just you know, make up your own mind, and yeah, together we can just forge wherever we want to be from here on out. Oh man, I like how you worded in a little bit of branding in there. Yeah, I know. It's good. It's good. <laughs> a forge pun. Uh, we don't do enough. No. 
Uh, speaking of which, if you like what you've heard or want to contribute to the conversations, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing and telling folks about us. If you leave us a five-star review, oh, which by the way, someone left interaction with us in the reviews. And I'm going to read that out next thing. They left a five-star review, which is awesome. And then mentioned some things that they thought we did not cover or could have covered in the episode. So it was, it was like the perfect thing. Great five-star showing that support and interacting with us. And so if that's your method of doing it, then do it. You can also hit us up on any of the comments or emails or whatever off the website or on social media. We love to hear it. Thank you all for doing it. We'll see you all next week. See you. See you. Thank you, TOs. I don't know what they said, but I already subscribed. You better do it too.